Hey Shumarati everyone, <clears throat> let's namaskar Taipa Kundalini and put ourselves into Panda. Jai Shumarati. Let's pray to the Almighty. You must pray to God and ask what you want. Ask for complete satisfaction in my heart, joy in my heart, bliss in my heart, so that the wor whole world becomes blissful. So let's put our right hand on our heart. Oh God. Please give me complete satisfaction in my heart, joy in my heart, bliss in my heart, so that the whole world becomes blissful. Keeping our hand on our heart. Give me love. Love that I could love the whole world and that the whole world becomes one in love. O oh, Divine, please give salvation to the entire humanity which is suffering. Please take me to your feet and cleanse me with thy love. O oh, Divine, please forgive me what I have done and forgive those who have done harm to me. Three great mantras.
let's just bring our attention, make sure it's in Sastra. Let's also connect our heart to a Sastra. May this light of our spirit shine. And may it take us to the feet of our Holy Mother through our Sarastrara. One mantra to Sri Ganesha. Om Twami Vasakshat Sri Ganesha Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Matahaji Sri Nimala Devi Namo Namaha Sri Ganesha, please remove all the obstacles that prevent us from being in thoughtless awareness. Please remove all the obstacles that distract our attention. I thought this morning with the birthday puja um, coming up on the weekend that we'd listen to some of the names of Sri um, Sri Mataji. So we'll just do that and then we'll play a birthday puja talk. Om Shri Mata. Om Shri Maharajni Namaha Om Shri Devakarya Samudhyata Namaha Om Shri Akula Namaha Om Shri Vishnu Granthi Vibhedini Namaha Om Shri Bhavani Namaha Om Shri Bhakti Priya Namaha Om Shri Bhakti Gamya Namaha Om Shri Sharmadayini Namaha Om Shri Niradhara Namaha Om Shri Niranjana Namaha Om Shri Nirlepa Namaha Om Shri Nirmala Namaha Om Shri Nishkalanka Namaha Om Shri Nitya Namaha Om Shri Nirakara Namaha Om Shri Nirakula Namaha Om Shri Nirguna Namaha Now listen to a 1990 birthday puja talk um, from Sydney, Australia. The children <coughs> are singing beautifully.
God's field, <coughs> realizing that they are no more drops, but they are part and parcel of the ocean. <coughs> And that the ocean itself is going to strengthen them and look after them. It's the ocean that is going to nourish them. And the same ocean is going to guide them. So the connection between a drop and an ocean has to be fully established. So the limitations of a drop have to be absolutely dissolved into the greatness of the ocean. <coughs> With care and with nice things to say, we can improve the depth of the collectivity. And with sincere desire to be collective, the desire to be collective has to be very sincere. So this expanse of your being will start. The first thing is needed a sincerity to yourself. Of course, because we are coming from a drop status, from a drop, a little limited drop from that phase. So we get engulfed again and again into those limitations. But we must see our own vision, what you will be in future, what you want to be in future. Thus this sincerity itself to the idea that you want to be collective itself will break all barriers. If you are sincere to any purpose, anything, then you forget the time, you forget the day where you forget everything, you want to achieve it, even in small things. Now this sincerity comes from where? There are two things which work out sincerity. Firstly, you must see for yourself what is Sahaja Yoga, what it has given you. It has given you realization. It has given you that wider vision. It has given you collective consciousness. It has given you thoughtless awareness and doubtless awareness. It has made a new personality out of you, like an egg becoming a bird. And now you are a bird and you cannot go back to the shell again. Once you realize what Sahaja Yoga has done for you and also realize what you have achieved in that, that is, you have achieved the knowledge, <coughs> knowledge of Kundalini, which was a secret knowledge all these years, absolutely secret knowledge. Nobody knew about it. It was all underground. All the knowledge about Kundalini you have, very clearly, without going to any college, school, university, anywhere. Without going to any laboratories, you have experimented with it. You found out what is Kundalini. You have seen with your own eyes, you have seen the rising of the Kundalini. You have given realization to people. Already you have experienced not only a cool breeze, of the Holy Ghost, but you have also experienced your own powers. Also you have seen that you have really become 
so much different from what you were in your knowledge of understanding things. So if your knowledge is so much with you and uh, you are entitled to raise the Kundalini of others, which was not done by any great saints before, by any great seers, maharshis, all these great people who lived. Only very, very few people had this capacity to raise the Kundalini. All these years that you have got, you understand what are the chakras and you can diagnose it, even the children can do it. Which we don't realize is something so great. At a human level, we didn't know a word about it. We never even had heard the word Kundalini. And in such a short time, you have become so knowledgeable. That's the blessing of Sahaja So when you see this, that you have so much knowledge, and the light of your attention, how it works, and then you see so many blessings that work out, and how automatically, just without doing anything, you achieve results. You are amazed, and you can't understand how it has happened, how it has worked out. Suddenly I was there, this happened. Suddenly I was there, that happened. How this ocean is every moment into all details working out things. All these happenings should open your eyes to the fact that you are no more like an ordinary human being, that you are sages now, that you are saints. So our attitude has to be changed. So many human beings are still animals. You can see the way they are killing, the way they are behaving. They are not even human beings. We live with them. We see them every day. They are criminals and not only that, but they have very low level of uh, culture in them. We can easily call them as animals. Then we have some human beings who are half animals and half human beings. Then we have some human beings who are really human beings, who are seekers. Kudayam Vasa, let them come forward if they want. Kudayam Vasa. And this understanding of what you have achieved in Sahaja Yoga should immediately make you realize what you are. And when it all has happened to us, automatically you should be very sincere about it. You must feel that something really we have achieved something so great. So we have to be sincere. Mentally also you should feel that. So this is first thing you do is to mentally feel, to mentally feel that it's so important, it is so, it is so important, it is so valuable, you become very sincere about it. But the second part is different, where you see something, you know something, and you start opening your heart about it. In the second part, you have to open your heart. So the sincerity comes from an open heart. If your heart is not open, you cannot be sincere. 
Now, what does it mean that your heart is not open? Let us see. You are born again, you have got your realization, also it is your birthday in a way. But in the growth of your knowledge and understanding, you have not kept pace with your heart. But what is the reason for that? What is it that keeps your heart like that? You can discover very easily that your heart rules the body, rules your brain, everything. Because if your heart stops, everything stops. But if your brain stops, heart won't stop. So heart is the most important thing and it governs the whole being within you. Now this special instrument, which is very delicate, which circulates also, is Story. We have to go to the roots of that. It becomes like a stone because the heart controls the brain. As there are seven auras on your brain, in the same way there are seven auras on your heart. And all those auras are the ones which control the auras of the brain. Now, <clears throat> on the brain, as you know, there are two institutions of ego and conditionings, which starts pressing the brain too much. As a result, all these auras get pressed. So the auras which are surrounding the heart also get pressed. But brain can think, yes, this is very good, I know how to raise Kundalini, I know how to do this, everything, I know what there is. It doesn't become stony that way. It can think. Anybody who is a stone-hearted fellow can think, like Hitler. So the brain does not get affected by the conditioning of the ego, to such an extent that it becomes like a stone, it cannot think. If it is ego too much, just lose it in the brain, go on falling, I'm holding it on. If it's an ego, then a person may become stupid, but he thinks, he thinks all that. He really becomes stupid. Anybody who is an egoist, uh, whose agya is catching, becomes a stupid fellow, no doubt about it. You see in his behavior, whenever he talks, the way he is trying to do anything, he's such a show-off, and he becomes a stupid fellow. Any wise person can see that, that he is such a stupid man. So what we find that Mind is covered with the superego, but it does not make a person with a brain which is stony. On the contrary, it makes a person a stupid person, not a stone-headed. And such a stupid man can go on talking all kinds of things and you can immediately recognize such a stupid man, no different. 
The other side of it is, is the conditionings in the mind. That's even a worse thing, very sly. Because somebody has the conditionings, he doesn't come out of it, he doesn't show off, but he's sly. And his brain is covered with such ideas which are a such. Like somebody saw me in a puja washing my hands and giving that water. I said, why do you take the water which is washed, which is washing mother's hands? So the other one said, mother has, has got such tremendous vibrations in her hands that when we wash them, the vibrations come in. Oh, he couldn't believe it. Because the conditionings are that whenever you wash your hands, only the dirt comes out. So they can't think of vibrations. All such conditionings are there in the mind of people. Because of these conditionings, they cannot take to heart. But what happens? That they think about it in a very sly manner, tell lies, talk nonsensical things, and try to convince you that they are right. They are not stupid, but they are idiotic. They talk like idiots, and that idiotic thing you accept. There is no wisdom in it. So one fellow is a stupid fellow, another one is an idiot. Between the two lies, the surge of it. So this conditioning makes the brain pervert, but it doesn't make it a stone. Only what makes it a stone is that if he is born with some sort of a mental derangement that he cannot think, otherwise the brain goes on thinking, whether with conditioning or with it, it goes on thinking. Such a brain should not affect the heart, because heart affects the brain. But the auras which are manifested from the heart start becoming dull or disappearing. So the auras around the heart are very sensitive and they feel no use throwing light on the brain. They start becoming smaller and smaller, and that's how the heart becomes small. Because they have no purpose in life then. So they start becoming smaller and smaller. As a result, the heart becomes small. We call somebody is very small-hearted fellow, is a chicken-hearted fellow. Or we always say such a man is a stone-hearted person. All this happens. Because of the conditionings and the ego of the human mind and the result is felt by uh, the heart becoming a stone, because heart is a sensitive thing. Brain is not that sensitive. If you put something soft in the water, it becomes hard. If you put a stone in the water and boil it, it won't. So heart being very sensitive and delicate becomes like a stone, as you boil in the heat of the brain waves. And it becomes a very hard stone. It does not know how to say even one word which is nice. Oh. <coughs> and post that talk after. Um, we're up to about 21 minutes if you want to resume uh, that talk from where we've left it. So let's meditate silently, collectively.
Let's do the last of the three great mantras. <clears throat> Om Dvame Vasakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Mokshat Pradaini Mataji Shri Nimala Devi Namo Namaha We'll finish up with, um, I picked one of those cards that we made many years ago for Guru Puja. And um, it says, if you are the instrument of God Almighty, the instrument of Adi Shakti, then your life will be full of love and joy. Beautiful. May you have a beautiful Sahaj day. May you, may you be blessed. And um, look forward to seeing you again next Monday. Jay Shri Mataji, everyone. Thank you for joining.